acknowledge uh, my contributing uh, authors uh, who are listed uh, uh, below. I have no disclosures. I have no financial support from any uh, companies. Uh, I do have to disclose that I am a uh, anesthesiologist and not uh, a surgeon. Uh, according to the American Cancer Society, uh, they estimated that in 2020 in the United States, there will be almost 280,000 new cases of uh, breast cancer diagnosed and about 42,000 uh, deaths from breast cancer in the United States. Um, uh, Gardner and his uh, group uh, in their study showed that uh, 42 47 percent of women uh, treated for breast cancer experienced pain uh, and 58 percent of the women experienced sensory disturbances in the surgical region um, up to three years after surgery. Gardner um, and his associates also reported that half of the women uh, that reported pain um, were uh, reporting moderate to severe pain. Uh, in agreement with uh, the estimates in the literature varying um, for uh, pain between 25 and 60 percent of all women post mastectomy, um, as well as uh, 20 to 80 percent of them having uh, sensory disturbances. <clears throat> D. Oliviera um, uh, reported that chronic pain uh, has been shown to affect up to 60 percent of patients undergoing surgery for our breast cancer in his study also. Uh, an early study by Perkins um, in 2000, uh, looking at chronic pain uh, as an outcome of uh, all types of surgeries, uh, found that particularly for breast surgery that there was 11 to 57% of the women had chronic pain at one year post-op. And studying uh, the predictive factors uh, for chronic pain uh, in, um, in the Perkins study, they showed that preoperative factors included uh, pain of moderate to severe, uh, lasting at least one month, as well as uh, moderate to severe pain um, in the acute phase postoperatively. Um, psychological vulnerability was found both preoperatively and um, postoperatively as factors affecting the development for chronic pain. Um, the role played by anesthetic management for mastectomy has been poorly studied and remains uh, controversial. Um, the questions such as can anesthetic management decrease intraoperative nociception? Um, can it decrease the immediate postoperative pain? Can our techniques decrease utilization of postoperative opioids, decrease postoperative nausea and vomiting? Can we decrease the development of chronic pain and decrease the long-term use and dependence on uh, opioids? Um, Azad uh, noted that acute postoperative pain following surgery uh, for breast cancer is known to be associated with the development of chronic pain and lower quality of life. In their study, the authors sought to analyze the relationship between differing uh, breast cancer excisional procedures, such as reconstruction, um, et cetera, uh, on the development of short-term pain outcome, that is, in the first 30 days post-discharge. Their conclusions were that younger age, preoperative opioid use, and longer length of stay were associated with higher levels of postoperative pain, up to 30 days uh, um, And they came up with a, uh, a way of um, evaluating patients um, for the development of chronic pain in um, breast cancer uh, patients. <clears throat> and it was called IDEAL, I-D-E-A-L. Um, identify the problems and specific uh, risk factors, define a plan of perioperative management involving an 
anesthesiologists, surgeons, nurses, and family members. Um, but anesthesia management is not reported in this particular study. Um, explore the possible strategies uh, such as use of multimodal analgesia and regional techniques when applicable. Um, act on these strategies, aggressively treat pain and prevent withdrawal from opioids. And look back and reevaluate the analgesic effect of your treatments, the functional status um, of the patient and adverse events. In our study, um, uh, we did a retrospective analysis, a single sentence, uh, center study, which aimed to uh, analyze the short-term and long-term follow-up in patients who had total mastectomy between July 2016 and February 2018. All surgeries were performed by a single surgeon uh, under general anesthesia with a preoperative paravertebral nerve block placement and preoperative um, oral medications such as gabapentin and acetaminophen. In addition, the general anesthetic was maintained with either a 50-50 uh, uh, blend of sevoflurane and intravenous propofol or just sevoflurane alone. And uh, these patients received intravenous ketamine, magnesium, and keterolac uh, in the operating room. Patients having a partial mastectomy were excluded from our study. Um, uh, 19 patients having immediate reconstruction after total mastectomy were also excluded. Uh, and another four patients were excluded because of incomplete uh, uh, medical records, uh, leaving 124 patients for our uh, total analysis. <clears throat> With respect to the methods that we used, the paravertebral nerve block was um, introduced to the patients in the uh, breast surgery clinic as well as in the anesthesia pre-op clinic, so they were already aware of this procedure. Um, Prior to the nerve block placement, the patients were given um, 1,000 milligrams of acetaminophen and 600 milligrams of gabapentin. Uh, the nerve blocks were performed in the preoperative area under mild sedation uh, with one to two milligrams of intravenous midazolam. And then using ultrasound needle guidance in the prone position. The local anesthetic used for the paravertebral block was uh, ropivacaine, 0.5% uh, in 15 to 20 mLs as a single injection. Uh, the patient satisfaction with the nerve block procedure itself was evaluated by a survey at the time of discharge from the hospital and reached 95.7% um, satisfaction with the uh, nerve block. Um, and that included the um, a surgical care as well. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like under ultrasound, um, you can see in this uh, image the transverse uh, process. Um, this is the pleura. Uh, this is our needle trajectory going just at the angle uh, inferior to the transverse process at approximately the um, uh, T5, uh, T6 level. Um, and once we penetrate the uh, internal uh, intercostal um, membrane, uh, we will be in the paravertebral space. And once you start injecting your local anesthetic, you see the pleura being pushed down, uh, the ligament or uh, membrane pushed up, and the local anesthetic uh, spread in the paravertebral uh, space. Um, and this is another image of it. Uh, this is uh, before injection, and this is after injection. You can see the pleura and this uh, 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 internal intercostal uh, ligament being uh, separated. And uh, we found that with a single injection, uh, as published uh, uh, by um, uh, team, um, the spread uh, in the paravertebral space is multi-level and covers the uh, entire uh, chest area as if we had performed a multi-level uh, intercostal block. <laughs> After placement of the nerve block, uh, patients were transported uh, to the operating room where general anesthesia was induced and endotracheal intubation was performed. Uh, 
alcohol was used for induction and rock coronium for muscle relaxation. Uh, intraoperative anesthetic variables, as mentioned earlier, uh, were um, uh, recorded uh, and they included the induction agents um, and agents for uh, maintenance of anesthesia, um, as well as um, the opioids that were used during the procedure. Uh, the administration of Ketorolac as 15 milligrams. Uh, total ketamine dose was 20 to 50 milligrams. Uh, two grams of magnesium, uh, 10 milligrams of dexamethasone, and of danzatron, four milligrams for postoperative uh, uh, nausea and vomiting control. Uh, the estimated blood loss was also recorded, um, but no patients uh, we received re required a blood transfusion. Patients with uh, 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 severe uh, immediate postoperative pain are in this column. The patients with mild postoperative pain are in the um, uh, second column. And as far as uh, preoperative uh, demographics, um, uh, comorbidities, um, uh, we found none of the comorbidities um, uh, associated with um, the amount of uh, immediate post-operative pain that reached uh, statistical significance. The only preoperative uh, factors um, uh, were uh, preoperative uh, alcohol use uh, reached statistical significance in that the group that had severe post-operative uh, pain or more severe post-operative pain um, uh, had a, uh, a higher uh, incidence of preoperative uh, alcohol use. Uh, the other factor was uh, preoperative opioid use uh, that also uh, uh, demonstrated a statistically significant uh, effect on um, immediate postoperative um, um, pain. Um, the types of uh, uh, cancer and the staging um, uh, and preoperative cancer treatments uh, did not reach statistical significance in terms of determining uh, patients with uh, I mean, severe or mild post-operative pain. The incidence of um, uh, post-operative opioid use uh, between the patients that had mild versus severe post-operative pain um, was um, uh, significant um, uh, as um, uh, indicated um, uh, in this um, uh, table, um, as well as the amount of opioid use in uh, morphine milligram equivalents uh, in the first um, uh, 24 hours. Uh, uh, Postoperative nausea and vomiting uh, did not reach statistical significance uh, between the two groups. Um, but would be clinically significant since pain is associated with postoperative nausea and vomiting. Um, and the group with the more severe postoperative immediate pain had more incidence of uh, nausea and, and vomiting. The anesthetic maintenance um, um, uh, between sevoflurane uh, uh, in 73 percent of the patients versus the combination of sevoflurane and propofol uh, did not have um, a significant bearing on uh, which group had uh, a severe versus uh, uh, mild post-operative immediate pain. Um, twice as many patients with severe immediate post-operative pain had significant pain uh, at one week compared to patients with the uh, mild immediate post-operative uh, pain. Um, and this um, uh, uh, association was um, uh, carried out at one month as well, 62% versus 31%. Um, and at six months, it was 29% versus 10%. Um, and then finally, at one year, 20.8% um, of the patients that initially had severe pain still had chronic pain versus only 8% uh, in the group that had mild postoperative pain. Combining the two groups together, chronic pain developed in a total of 13.3% uh, of our patient population. 
um, uh, other things uh, such as um, uh, infection or brachial plexus uh, uh, impairment uh, did not reach clinical significance. Um, Kuva Guimian and his group in a, in a randomized controlled trial investigating the effect of general anesthesia as an independent prognostic factor for breast cancer recurrence after surgery found that there was no difference between the inhalational anesthetic sevoflurane uh, and the intravenous uh, anesthetic propofol with respect to circulating tumor cell counts uh, over time. Likewise, you uh, et al. in a retrospective study found no association between the type of anesthesia, inhalation versus intravenous on the long-term prognos prognosis of breast cancer patient surgery. Um, unfortunately, uh, however, uh, there were too many variables and lack of statistical power in our study to, to determine any effects on cancer recurrence of our protocol, which also included the preoperative paravertebral nerve block. Therefore, the aim of our study was uh, to investigate factors affecting chronic pain development in post-mastectomy patients, including the preoperative factors, anesthetic management, surgical management, and post-operative follow-up. Um, in comparison, uh, Carluma, uh, in 2004, studied pre-incisional single injection thoracic paravertebral nerve block for post-operative analgesia in women undergoing breast cancer surgery, uh, which also uh, in, uh, involved axillary dissection, and they used a randomized and placebo-controlled uh, protocol. Uh, in their study, the analgesic effect of the paravertebral nerve block was detectable uh, for the entire uh, 24 hours post. Um, they did uh, then report in a second uh, um, follow-up study up to one year um, uh, that um, uh, uh, at 12 months after surgery, uh, in addition to the prevalence of pain symptoms and the intensity of motion-related pain, the intensity of pain at rest uh, was lower in the group that had the paravertebral uh, nerve block pre-op compared to the group that had um, a saline paravertebral uh, block, uh, that is the control group. Um, in our study, uh, the use of preoperative paravertebral nerve block was associated um, um, with a, um, uh, a much lower uh, uh, initial pain scores in the uh, post-anesthesia uh, care unit that was statistically significant. Um, and 80.5% of our patients reported only mild post-operative pain. Um, <clears throat> the other 19.5% uh, reported uh, uh, more severe pain, um, but even that was only uh, 2.77 plus or minus 1.97 on the visual analog uh, pain score. Um, <clears throat> so the anesthetic management um, uh, that we used in our protocol, which also included the general anesthetic ketamine, magnesium, um, fentanyl as the um, uh, intraoperative opioid, um, uh, the, uh, uh, influenced not only the acute postoperative but also seem to decrease the incidence of chronic pain in patients having this mastectomy surgery for breast cancer um, uh, at one year follow-up. And uh, the uh, amount of uh, pain um, that was noted in 31% of our patients preoperatively, uh, only 13% had chronic pain at one year. Um, but a use of opioids for chronic pain uh, preoperatively, as well as alcohol consumption in the pre-op history should alert surgeons and anesthesiologists to patients at greater risk of developing chronic pain uh, post-mastectomy surgery. This was the uh, major finding of our uh, 
So having breast cancer is a physical and psychological stress. And if you add to that the trauma of mastectomy surgery, um, it shows that pain control for women who undergo mastectomy surgery is the responsibility of all of us and must involve a multimodal approach to assure the best possible long-term outcome. Uh, what we showed was that a multimodal um, uh, uh, protocol that included preoperative medications, a good preoperative history, um, a paravertebral nerve block perform, performed preoperatively, as well as a multimodal intraoperative general anesthetic, including things like ketamine and uh, magnesium, um, provided uh, protection for these patients uh, in the majority of cases uh, from developing chronic pain at uh, uh, one year post-op. So with that, I will uh, thank you very much and uh, take any questions.